This video is a proof of concept for ADVPN 2.0 using a single hub. ADVPN 2.0 introduces transit groups. And what transit groups are, they allow you to group together your interfaces that are of similar types. So in this example, we have MPLS interfaces and we have DIA interfaces. Obviously, these interfaces cannot form VPN tunnel shortcuts between the two. I can't use my public IP on the DIA and form a VPN tunnel to my private IP on my MPLS circuit. They just can't see each other. It's impossible. So ADVPN 2.0 introduces transit groups, which allows the FortiGate to segregate those and not even try to create those shortcuts. So let's look at our environment. We have a single hub. Disregard hub number two. It's actually shut down. So we have a single hub. We have site A down here on the left, and we've got site B down here on the right. These are two branch sites. What we're going to do is ping from site A to hub one. We're going to ping from site B to hub one. And as you can see, that's going across the five millisecond path. The five millisecond path is MPLS. Now we're going to ping from spoke to spoke, so from A to B, and also from B back to A. Again, those are using the five millisecond paths. If we were go to, to go across DIA, which is our backup line, those overlays would take a 22 millisecond path. So let's see what's going on here. All right, so on Fortinet A, path number one is MPLS, that's five millisecond. We're gonna shut down that primary path. And what do we expect to see? We expect to see traffic then traverse the DIA path, which is in the 22 millisecond range from A up to the hub. And then again, we expect to see traffic going between the spokes across that DIA circuit since MPLS is down on the primary path. Now, MPLS is, is currently up on the B side, but again, we cannot create shortcut tunnels between DIA on A and MPLS on B. However, B traffic going up to the hub still traverses that MPLS circuit as we can see here with a five millisecond path. So if we normalize that and we bring that circuit back, what we should see is that traffic from A back to the hub goes to five millisecond, and then the spoke to spoke goes to back to five millisecond, and we're normalized. Obviously, we need to wait for that circuit to come up. We need to wait for those health checks to pass, and then we should see the latency drop down to five milliseconds. And there we are. Everything's come back and normalized, and we have the path down to the five milliseconds up to the hub, and then between the two spokes. So everything is back on MPLS. Now let's do that again. Let's simulate a scenario where the A side loses MPLS and the B side loses DIA. Well, if that's the case, that means we can no longer form shortcuts between A and B because they don't have two circuits that are healthy. So to shut down the, <clears throat> the DIA circuit on B side, we can come up here at B, we can right click on port number two and we can disable it. As you can see, we will lose our path between the two hubs. I'm sorry, we will lose our path between the two spokes, but it will return. So let's, let's wait a second and let's look at what's going on and then we'll talk about how it returned. So from, from A up to hub one, we're going across DIA because our MPLS circuit's down. From B back to hub one, our DIA circuit is down, but we're, so we're, we're going across our MPLS circuit, which is what we expect. So we have five milliseconds here. And then from spoke to spoke traffic, our latency hopped up to about 30 milliseconds. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means that the traffic between the two spokes is no longer going direct because there is no direct path. There is no MPLS to MPLS or DIA to DIA. Traffic is actually being proxied through the hub. So my traffic from A to B is going from A up to hub one and back down to B. And the traffic from B is going from B to hub one and back down to A. Now, if we normalize everything, so let's bring back circuit number two. 
And again, I'm running in a VM environment with very limited memory. So let's see if the, the 40 gates can, can do their thing with only two gigs in a, in a software setup here. But what we should see now is that the circuit should come back up. The SLAs should um, do their thing and determine that everything is, is back to normal. And we should see across the board, everything return to the five millisecond path. So let's just wait for that to happen. Sure enough, five milliseconds, five milliseconds, five milliseconds, five milliseconds. And there you have it. This is a, uh, a video just to describe how ADVPN 2.0 works and how it segregates the different transit types.